It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Rusty Quill presents ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. In 1973, a group of indigenous artists formed a collective. The press called them the Indian Group of Seven. Their goal? To raise the profile of indigenous art. It was all or nothing. We're representing all our people. And create a permanent space in galleries for indigenous artists in Canada and around the world. That was really a rock star moment for me. I'm Soleil Lunier, and this is Among Equals, the history and legacy of the professional native Indian artists, Inc. Listen wherever podcasts are heard. ACAST helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. ACAST.com We're Alive, a story of survival. Chapter 38 Unity Makes Strength. Part 2 of 3. You say your goodbyes? Yeah. Took a while to find everyone. Video check. Come and call anyone. I hear you just fine. Be sure to keep checking in. I read up, all right? Can't wait all day. Bye, Michael. Bye, Victor. Be seeing you. Bye. Bye, Mama. I love you, baby. Shotgun. Well, duh. Lizzie's got to go in the back. You radio back and let me know if there's any trouble, okay? And I'll see you sometime later this week, after we get our task done. See you soon. Come on. Let's go. I gotta get back and check on my patients. Copy that. Uh, wait, so your team is looking around already? I, I thought... No, they're just getting a few pieces for the gate. You know about that, huh? Hard to keep any secrets around here. Who'd you pick? Muldoon, Robbins, Puck, and Carl. Don't need a lot, and not a lot to spare. If you're looking for anyone else, I thought I'd throw my name in the hat. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> you? Why? You really think I want back on laundry detail? No thanks. Um, don't take this the wrong way, but you're not exactly the best candidate. Hey, I've got training in Boulder too. I'm not half bad. And my ankle's gonna heal eventually. Hmm. Well, I distinctly remember the conversation we had in Irwin. Something along the lines of, we're not soldiers. I just, well, I was wrong. Wait, what was that? I was wrong. You were right. Well, thank you. But honestly, I don't know if I can use you on my team. But that was worth hearing. Seriously, I know I'm not the best. But I really think you're right on this one. I, I was in Boulder. I, we can't run away from this anymore. And I really have to help. I want to help. You know I can hold my own. Uh, I appreciate that, and I'll keep you in mind. Heading back now. I have the part. You better. You might need someone with my kind of thinking skills. It's a small pot, isn't it? Yeah, well, it fits in your mother's socket just fine. Because let's face it, they may not be the brightest bunch. Don't push it. I'll keep you in mind.
Here. Will this work? Yeah, I hope so. Just set it down over there. Wow. That really is a big gun. Where'd that come from? The army guys brought it? It was mine, actually. Where'd you get it? A friend of a friend. Oh, and it fires these bullets? But well, they're huge. Would you not touch that? It won't fire much of anything right now. The feed paw is all tweaked. I just hope I can bend it back. Do you need anything else beside the vice? Or maybe a, uh, a hand with that? It can't be easy for you. Well, I'm managing fine. Thanks. I just got to learn to deal with it. Can someone get the door? I'm coming. Thank you. Did you find out what was wrong? Can you fix it? Hey, don't rush me. If you don't need me anymore, uh, I'm wanted back at the gate. We're about to lose the light. Yeah, go, go, yeah, and thanks for this. Wow, that thing seen some action. Yep. Um, I don't want to distract you, but I wanted to ask you when you think this thing will work again. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, um, well, I was thinking if we make a tripod or something for this thing, we'd be able to move it around wherever we need to. We might even be able to make several of these things and just move around the gun part of this one and the mini gun from the helicopter. Sure. Sure. And by the time you carry this all the way around the colony, they'd be already inside. It's a waste of time. We just need something that we can get propped up on truck beds and be done with it. Or, you know, ask Saul or Victor where the old broken-down Hummer is and, and grab the mount off it. All right. I'll ask them later. Why not now? Oh, yeah, you can't, because they're not here anymore, are they? Am I going to have to explain this decision to everyone? You keep running your merry little show here, and we'll just keep doing whatever you say, right? Never ask a single question. So far, everyone's had no problem with me compared to how things were here before. You just don't like having people tell you what to do. Figured that out already, didn't you? I'm trying to make this place into something, and I would really appreciate your help in doing so. I'm not your lap dog. That's Michael's gig. Just keep throwing people around, not caring that we all spent all that time apart. All this, not the people. Saul and Victor are needed up there. They're the only ones that can do it. I keep saying the same thing, but there's really no one else that's qualified. That's fine. I feel like I'm spending half my time running PR instead of trying to be able to focus on this place. Well, that wasn't my main problem. Then what? Out with it. What about Scratch? What about her? If she comes back here... Then we'll be ready. What do you think I'm doing right now? Aside from wasting my time in here, we're putting up even more defenses, traps, and alarms, working outposts again with live video feeds. You want to see... We'll have something in place for anyone or anything that tries to get in. That's not gonna matter. The prisoners who got out wouldn't have survived anyway. This place was surrounded. They would have had run right into those things. We're not that lucky. I thought you, of all people, would have a different perspective. You really want to compare your loss with mine? So... This is your only plan? When they come back? If they come back. And you wanted something more? If you're worried about her, I assure you, I will be ready. I just wanted to know what you were going to do. You've answered my question. That's it? I can go? I didn't ask you to come. Did that do it? 
Mm, nope. Still nothing. Let me try. What about now? There it goes. It's charging. Good. It was down to 3%. More importantly, the coffee maker's going now. It is too early to deal with all this. I hope they get the whole electrical thing fixed today. All right. Where are we? Okay. So, this file here is the timeline of everything so far. Any attacks or deaths are highlighted in red. If there's a number in blue to the right, for example, this one, R-29-09, that corresponds to the journal entry list on the other tab here. This one's R for Riley's entry and the date. You had to type up all the journals? Hey, I was locked up for a while. Plenty of time to do it. But really, I only entered what was relevant. Wait, you were locked up? Why? See, that's the next thing that's got to be done. I started making this last night. It's a simple fact sheet to give out to everyone outlining most of the important details of what's happened lately. But there's still a bunch more entries to put in. All that? This is just since I last updated the files. I'm starting to rethink this. Well, I can still help out when I'm not swamped in the... No, 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 no. I'm, I was kidding. This is fine. I did a lot worse when I was in pre-law. I can type fast. And this is pretty well organized. I think I can manage. Here, let me. Okay. So, that fact sheet. Michael and CJ both want to send out memos to bring everyone up to speed with what we know so far about those things and any tactics that work better than others. Like I said, I've got it started. But... What's this? Oh, God! Close! Close! Gross! What was that? Oh, photo records. We, we got a bunch taken of attacks. Look, why don't you just leave that folder for me to deal with? Why would you save those? Analyze patterns, places on the body where they go first, mostly the neck. I didn't think I had to look at... I, it's... It's just gonna take some getting used to. Well, that's nothing to me anymore. I didn't even think about warning you. I'm sorry. I've seen some pretty bad stuff since all this happened. You'd think it'd get easier. Oh, well, you know, the thing that kept me from becoming a real doctor was stuff like that. That's right. You were a vet. I keep forgetting. So that's the only reason? That and animals are a lot nicer than people. Till they try to bite you. So I guess not a lot has changed for me. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee's on. So aside from entering these into the computer, anything else I should do? Mm-hmm. I also keep a paper record as backup. Printouts and originals go in that case there. Just stay out of the green folder. Hard copies of the pictures. Wait, some of these new ones are already in here. Oh, I did a few last night. That X in the corner means it's already done. You did all these last night? Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. Couldn't put it down. <laughs> good stuff? Boy, I knew you were sick, but whoa. No, 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 no. It's like a puzzle. Every new bit just fills in something else, makes it clearer. It's the little things, L like here. Click that one there, Saul's folder. He wrote this before he left? Oh, what he could, and the entire time he was here. I haven't gone through it all. But just take a look at the most recent one. B there, that part. Victor shot one of the ones on the ground that was moving. We moved to the other side of the wall and looked out with the binoculars. Back by the police station, nine figures stood. From the look of all the cars around them, I could tell these efforts were tall. They stood and waited, not moving. Controlled movement, coordinated restraint. They're working together. The sort of thing gets you going. Why would they stand there? What were they waiting for? Free lunch? They can communicate. We've heard them call each other. What if they were told not to come? You sure you're not just reading into it? Look a little ways down the page. The one in the suit calls those numbered ones in. The normals and the big ones already had been at the walls for a while. So why then? Wait till the colony was low on ammo. He didn't want to risk them. And if that's true, then does that mean that some of them know our patterns? Try to predict us? I mean, it's said on another sheet that they followed someone back. But how they were attacked here? What if it was planned and not just a reaction? You got all that from this? They're not that smart. I, I mean, you're really reaching here. Could just be a coincidence. 
Read enough of these accounts and you'll start to see that none of it's coincidence. What does Michael think? I haven't told him yet. I didn't get through everything. There's a whole nother stack over there from Saul and Victor's last four months. I'm gonna get started with these, but I'm thinking you might want to go lay down for a while. Don't shit on my ideas because you think I'm tired. Now I know where Saul gets it from. You don't want this job? That's fine. If you can't respect what we're doing here, then you... No, no, no. I can do this, but maybe I'm what you need at this point, right? I'll have a different perspective on everything. I am, or was, a lawyer, remember? If it's circumstantial, that's kind of what I'm supposed to look for, right? Maybe that's why Michael asked me to do this. Hey, I'm sorry. I, you're right. I just get so wrapped up in this stuff lately, and yeah, I haven't been sleeping. That's everyone here. It's all right. I really think I can help, okay? Well, if you have any questions, I'm going to go lay down in the on-call room down the hall. Here, I don't think I need any more of this. I'll pour a new cup, but thanks. You know where it's at. Jeez, what a weirdo. Well, it beats laundry. None of this makes any sense. I mean, look at this. I really don't see any difference. You're starting to grow corn. Now. And you're over-fertilizing everything, and the rest is practically drowning. To be honest, none of us really knew what we were doing after Kirk died. We just kept making it look like we knew what we were doing for the prisoners. I'm sorry, but we just wanted this stuff to grow. And fast. I know. I know. Kirk really didn't know what he was doing either. I mean, I tried to tell him when I worked here before, but obviously he didn't listen. Okay. Um, do we have spare wood, like cut stuff? Yeah, I think so. They're using a lot for fixing the walls, but I think we can get more. We already have some in place to section off areas if that's what you're looking for. No, no, it's not for sections. I want to build long boxes all along these two rows. Boxes? For what? Potatoes. Unless you guys are already growing some. We tried it before, and they were all green. We were afraid to eat them. That's because they weren't growing right. What we need to do is stack large boxes here about this wide, and then another whole row here. Wait, are there any nightshade plants here, like eggplant or chili peppers? No, nothing like that. There's a list in the shack if you want to check it. Okay, all right, good. So we'll need those planks about this thick for the boxes, and the rest to make these really deep, but above ground. Oh, and we're going to need some wood shavings, too. There's a planer in one of the workshops. I can make that happen. Okay. Well, maybe this isn't the exact time to start planting them, but we can start getting the supplies ready. And I think there's a few others we can get going in the meantime, like peas and carrots. Those will be small yields. But if we can get the potatoes going, we could have hundreds of pounds of food by the summer. Those can be stored for long periods of time, too. Wait, so what am I doing? <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm just getting excited. Let's start by removing these two rows here. Clear out all of the existing fertilizer, and I'll start figuring out what to do next. All right. Okay, so that's corn there, and the apple tree sprouts are probably too big. All right! Push it towards me! Come on, the track's tired. Come on, push! What's next? That's it, right, Datu? You need us here anymore? No! That's it! Thank you, guys! Oh, good. I need a break. Okay, you keep real. Oh, yeah, me too. <clears throat> You're all okay. Uh, mm. 
Yeah, it's fine. It just gets sore every so often since I broke it. You ain't in a cast. No, a while ago. I never told you about that? Nope. Oh, well, uh, see, I was reaching through a doorway and, uh... Michael! We're busy right now. Got lots of things to do. Come on, Michael. No, no, it's all right. I was trying to back you up, man. Michael, hey, you got a sec? Can I do something for you? You mind? Anything you say to him, you can say to me. It's okay, I'll catch up. Check on Robbins and Muldoon. Find out where they are. I'm watching you. Little John, what's your status? What is it? The other day, that was just... Michael! I said give me a... No, now! Repeat that! Yeah, uh, we're supposed to be the only team out here right now, right? Yes, why? What do you see? Is it... is it her? Well, we just crossed Magnolia coming back toward you and saw another car leaving. What? From the colony? Did you see who it was? There were two in the car. Couldn't see the passenger, but that old dude was driving. Glenn? Nah, nah, he was at the gate with us. Bert. No one's supposed to leave without our escort, right? No, and he knows that. Wait, what does that mean? He left. Join us again Monday for the next episode of We're Alive. And now, a word from our sponsors. Starring Jim Gleason, Nate Gies, Shirley Jordan, Constance Parn, Otto Sturk, Brett Newton, Elisa Elliott, Scott Marvin, Glenn Hoffner, Sean Lewin, James Stebick, Tony Ray, Tammy Klein, Jay Oligario, Blair Wayland, and I'm Michael Swan. Written and directed by K.C. Wayland. Produced by Grayson Stone and K.C. Wayland. Composer Daniel Burkov Hopkins. Series artist Ben Hosack. Editors Phil Englert and K.C. Wayland. Zinterns Lauren Kroon, Ray Husky. Voice cutter Brent McLean. Print editor, Elisa Elliott. Line producers, Grayson Stone and Blair Whalen. To find out more and for a full list of cast and crew, please visit our website at we'realive.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for all production-related updates and future projects. Thank you for listening to this Audio Theater for the Mind by Wayland Productions. Children of the night, I'm trying to read. Renfield, enter. Count Dracula. I found an especially juicy dinner for you, Master. It's not a puppy this time, is it? No, Master. I promised I had learned my lesson. (laughs) I know you did, and you've been steadfast ever since. I apologize for doubting you. Please, put it over there. Master, if I may ask... Why didn't you go out hunting tonight? Why did you request takeout? It's because I'm reading a very excellent book that I just can't put down. It is quite the page-turner, as I believe the children today say. It's called Gothic Meditations at Midnight by Dr. Stephen Edred Flowers. Gothic Meditations at Midnight? Is it a forbidden grimoire of unholy rites? (laughs) No, Renfield. As its subtitle states, it contains esoteric commentaries on classic horror literature and film from the year 1919, which for me was a very good year, to 1975. I don't understand, Master. Dr. Flowers is a scholar who is also a lover of horror films and literature. 
and he was a monster kid. You always said children were the most tasty. <laughs> Focus, Renfield. I am not drinking Dr. Flowers. I would rather consume his tasty books, like this one. Gothic Meditations at Midnight. Yes, Renfield. Gothic Meditations at Midnight. In it, he provides commentaries on his thoughts and, well, meditations. Meditations on film and literature through the lenses of the historical Gothic, from the Gothic tribes to the later artistic movement of that same name. He meditates on various esoteric and occult aspects, and with plenty of sinister fun. He even starts with an essay on me. Excellent, Master. What else did he meditate on? Plenty. There are chapters on the mummy, the wolfman, the phantom of the opera, Dr. Frankenstein and his creature, the nihilistic cosmic horror of H.P. Lovecraft, the psychologically interior horror of Edgar Allan Poe, a unique exploration of zombies, the horror films of German expressionism, and quite a bit more. Each essay explores information and interpretations that are deep and dark, wondrous and mysterious, with a distinct synthesis of the scholarly and the personal. It sounds wonderful, Master. I will leave you to your book and your meal. <laughs> Thank you, Renfield. Out of curiosity, who did you capture for my dinner? An especially pompous professional film and literature critic. <laughs> Most serendipitous, Renfield. Most serendipitous indeed. Critics. And people think vampires are parasites. Ha! Gothic Meditations at Midnight by Dr. Stephen Edred Flowers is available at SeekTheMysteries.com That's S-E-E-K-T-H-E-M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-E-S dot com or at your favorite online or brick-and-mortar bookstore. Ha, 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 ha.